Hi all, uh, I have been asked by some of the subscribers to make a video on the calculations involved in the grounding of a vessel when the vessel goes aground and touches the bottom. Now previously I have made uh, ship stability videos on dry docking calculations and the calculations involved are very similar when it comes to dry docking or grounding but today I thought I'll take up an example and show you how they are similar and uh, why we consider them uh, in a similar fashion all right so the today's topic is uh, grounding of vessel and of course this is in the area of ship stability so we'll take up an example of a calculation and solve that calculation i'll show you why the calculations involve uh, the parameters that it does so the question here is that uh, the ship of 8000 tons displacement takes the ground that means it goes at ground part of the ship touches the bottom uh, or a seabed uh, and it happens on a sand bank on a falling tide so when the uh, tide was falling that means the level of water was going down uh, the vessel touched bottom uh, the vessel however was an, on an even keel draft of 5.2 meters that means the forward and aft drafts were the same so the forward and aft draft was 5.2 the kg of the vessel was 4 meters uh, the predicted depth of water over the sand bank following the low water was 3.2 meters so after the low water the predicted depth of water or the next high water after low water would be 3.2 meters and you have to calculate the gm so gm is the one that you have to calculate at this time assuming that km will then be 5 meters and the mean tpc is 15 tons all right so why the uh, dry docking and grounding calculations pretty much involve the same parameters and why do we consider them very similar situations because assume that uh, a vessel in dry dock this is a vessel in dry dock all right and that vessel touches the keel blocks maybe the stern of the vessel touches the keel blocks now instead of this keel block which is part of the dry dock we can replace this keel block with the seabed all right it's pretty much the same so it's part of a vessel touching a seabed or part of the vessel touching the keel block it's pretty much the same thing because what happens here is as soon as a part of the vessel touches uh, the seabed or the keel block uh, part of the displacement of the vessel or part of the weight of the vessel is transferred onto the seabed or to the keel block so seabed when it is grounding and keel block when it is dry docking all right so keel block when it is dry docking and seabed when it is grounding and as soon as the part of the vessel touches a bottom either the seabed or the keel block there is an upward thrust that acts which is equal to the weight of the vessel taken by the keel block or the seabed that upward thrust is called p and this is similar with either uh, the dry docking or grounding questions assuming this is the water level wl is the water level all right so similarly the calculations involved in a grounding or dry docking become very similar and as we go along i'll show you uh, that both the dry docking and the grounding calculations uh, involve the use of two formulas so there is a method one and method two and you can solve the question with using either method and i'll show you why uh, and what is the difference in each method all right so here the up thrust is p p is the equal to the weight of the water or weight of the ship transferred to the either keel block or the seabed all right as soon as the part of the vessel touches the keel block or the seabed so i'll keep saying keel block or seabed because it depends on whether you are doing a dry docking question or a grounding question it's pretty much the same now the formula is p which is the upward thrust equals tpc multiplied by the fall in the water level now when we say fall in the water level that could be a grounding question and if it's a dry docking question we sometimes say tpc into reduction in draft it's the same thing more or less fall in water level or reduction in draft if you think about it it's pretty much the same thing so when there is a fall in water level there is of course a reduction in draft right so the formula is p which is the upward thrust equals tpc multiplied by fall in water level now here of course tpc is given to you in the question as 15 fall in the water level is from 5.2 which was the draft this is what's the draft 
and the water level after the low water is immediately is 3.2 meters so 3.2 meters has been converted to centimeters so in both the cases they have been converted to centimeters so 5.2 this is actually 5.20 meters minus 3.20 meters this is given to you in the question but we converted into centimeters all right because tons tpc stands for tons per centimeter immersion so because tpc is in the unit of centimeters you will convert the fall in water level into centimeters as well so 15 times the reduction in the draft or fall in the water level is 15 times 200 which is equal to 3000 tons now this is the upward thrust all right once you've calculated the upward thrust you have two formulas to calculate the reduction in the gm or the what what you have to calculate you have to calculate the gm at the time just after the low water when the high water is setting in and the draft or the depth of the water is 3.2 meters now in method one if you watch the diagram carefully and you can pause the diagram here you can see i'm trying to show you a transverse section of the ship during that critical period after the vessel has just touched the bottom or it has touched a keel block that is why i'm showing you both it has either touched a keel block or it has touched the bottom and the vessel may just incline to a small angle by a force which is external to the ship so of course because you are not the vessel is not yet balanced it's not yet sitting evenly on either the keel blocks or the ground bottom so even when it touches the bottom it will not touch how you want it to touch it can touch at any part of the vessel and because of that there could be some unevenness there could be a slight tilt or slight list as we call there could be a slight, slight inclination of the vessel by a force which is external to the ship it could be due to a wave or due to the winds now you can see here for the sake of clarity the angle of heel has been shown and magnified it has been shown clearly what the angle of heel is so if you can't see angle of heel this is the angle of heel theta theta is the angle of heel the weight of the ship which is the displacement of the ship is denoted by w it is acting downwards as any weight does even your weight acts downwards it's the law of gravity so the weight of the ship acts downwards through the center of gravity which is g here the force p that i described before acts upwards because like i told you as soon as part of the vessel touches the bottom part of the ship's weight is taken by the bottom and an equal and opposing force which is p acts upwards that is to balance out the forces so the force p acts upwards through the keel which is k k is the keel and it is equal to the weight being borne or weight being taken up by either the keel blocks in case of dry docking or the ground so part of the weight of the vessel is transferred to the ground and equal and opposing force acts upwards to balance it all right so for any equilibrium the force of buoyancy must now be w minus p because the ship's total displacement was w part of the ship's weight is now taken up by the bottom so the force of buoyancy has become w minus p displacement minus the weight of the ship which has been taken by the bottom and that acts upwards through the initial meter center which is m all right so there are three parallel forces to consider here when you are calculating the effect of the force p on the ship's stability all right so taking this forward we can calculate virtual loss of gm which is mm1 in this case so you can see that is the initial gm that is the gm after or that is the center of a uh, meta center after the list has taken place so because of the list you can see a theta angle has formed and that distance between that is mm1 that is the virtual loss of the gm so m separates from the g because of the list so that can be calculated by the formula p multiplied by km divided by displacement p you have calculated above as 3000 km is given to you in the question as 5 or if it's not given to you in the question then you will have hydrostatic tables so you can get it from the hydrostatic tables and then you have been given the displacement 8000 so you can calculate it for the displacement given so if you have been given tables and you have the displacement then you can calculate the corresponding km from there or the km will be given to you in the question so what you get is a virtual loss of gm is 1.88 meters all right so meta center has shifted and there has been a virtual loss of gm 
so the gm was more the gm has become reduced by 1.88 meters so if we say that the initial km given to us is 5 meters virtual loss was minus so 1.88 meters which is negative we will subtract it so virtual km then becomes 3.12 meters all right because uh, you can see it has been a loss and kg given to us in the question is 4 meters km minus kg is gm so here km minus kg because kg is more than km so gm is negative 0 0.88 meters all right i'll tell you the meaning of negative gm later on what you can do to correct this situation normally gm should never be negative but in this case it's negative because there has been a grounding so immediately the stability of the vessel has been reduced so i'll come back to this initial and the negative gm but let's see now how to calculate the same thing through the second method all right so in the second method you can see here the diagram and you can see now there are two parallel forces again w and p and their resultant w minus p is acting downwards through g1 which is here through the shift of the center of gravity all right so there are two forces here to consider w minus p acting upwards through m this w minus p is acting upwards through the meta center and w minus p acting downwards through the center of gravity these produce a writing moment of w minus p multiplied by gm or g1m multiplied by sin theta so the original meta centric height was gm but it has now been reduced to g1m all right so you can see g is here and gm has reduced so g1 because g has moved upwards g1 and that is why g1 gg1 becomes a virtual loss of meta centric height due to either we can say dry docking or we can say due to the vessel touching the bottom now why gg1 moves upwards is because as soon as part of the vessel's displacement is lost like i told you before as soon as the vessel touches the seabed part of the weight of the vessel gets transferred to the seabed this results in the virtual loss of the displacement as well so part of the weight of the vessel is taken up by the seabed now it is like a discharge operation taking place like a cargo discharging so as soon as the part of the bottom touches and a virtual loss of the displacement takes place because of the weight of the vessel getting transferred to the seabed the center of the gravity moves in a direction opposite direction from the loss so that's why g moves upwards and as a result the gm is reducing but you can see the kg is increasing so from kg it becomes kg1 so that's why I look at the diagram and see what is happening here right so in this case the virtual loss of gm is defined as gg1 because the center of gravity goes upwards in a direction opposite from the weight loss or the displacement loss and that can be calculated as p multiplied by kg divided by w minus p p you know before we have calculated kg is given to you w minus p is nothing but displacement minus p which is 8000 minus 3000 which is equal to 5000 and the virtual loss of gm is 2.40 meters now your initial kg given to you was 4 meters your gg1 as you can see your g has moved away from g1 so kg1 kg has increased in this case all right kg has increased and gm has reduced all right so this is with reference to kg so you will add the gg1 reduction to k uh, initial kg so your kg has increased so your virtual kg which is your kg1 has become 4 plus 2.40 meters which is 6.40 km minus kg should give you gm but again here km is less than kg so your gm here is negative 6.4 minus 5 is 1.40 meters so you can see here although the difference in the value of gm slightly differs not slightly it differs quite a lot but both the methods are giving you negative gm and in both the cases the method the negative g is negative gm is negative and the answer is a bit different so you can use either or method i know the answer will be different but both the methods are technically correct 
Now you can see here in both the cases the vessel has developed a negative GM. So consequently she becomes an unstable vessel. Whenever you have negative GM you have unstable vessel. So therefore in this case she would capsize. The vessel would capsize if any transverse external forces such as winds or waves were to remove her from her zero angle of heel. So in this case all we can suggest is a change of loading to reduce the kg. So you have to bring the kg down the center of gravity down to make gm positive value. So or you can add weights to it by loading taking in ballast and shifting the center of gravity downwards to reduce kg and to increase gm. Alright so I just thought I'll uh, take up an example of grounding and the whole purpose here was to show you that it is very similar to dry docking calculations and please watch my video on dry docking calculations it's in my playlist of ship stability and uh, but I was requested to make a video on grounding as well it's very similar and that's why I never in, uh, discussed grounding but I thought today I'll take this up and show you how it all works and why this happens so in one case of course you can see that we have a formula where P is multiplying by km that is method one and we assume that the displacement is the same in the other we take it with reference to the kg and we assume a reduction in the displacement all right so in one there are three parallel forces acting in the other there are two parallel forces acting and uh, you can see in one we consider the shift in the meta center and in the other one we consider a shift in the center of gravity so these are some little differences in the two methods they are giving slightly different answers of course but both, both methods are correct. So if you have any questions, let me know. And I'll see you soon with my other videos uh, on other topics.